Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Meso Terrick and our continuing series on the Steam Deck, more specifically how to set up and use MU Deck and particular emulators on the system because Valve's portable, powerful handheld was definitely meant to only play old NES games from the 80s and 90s. All jokes aside, we're going to be doing the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Famicom Disk System today. And while it seems like it would be easy to set up, there are some peculiarities on the Famicom Disk System side that I really want to go over to make sure you get these things working correctly. Because the NES has a ton of absolutely iconic games on it, but at the same time, so does the Famicom Disk System. And that does take a little bit more setup, and there is an actual error in the GitHub documentation for EmuDeck that I did alert the developers to. Maybe it's fixed by the time you're watching this video, but do follow along carefully, especially with the Famicom Disk System stuff, so you can understand how it works. And before we get too far involved, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and I got a Patreon link below as well if you're so interested. But EmuDeck does have a great setup document showing you all of the different emulators that it installs that you can play via RetroArch, as well as the ROM formats and files required in the emulation BIOS folder. Now if we go down to NES, you're going to see that it lists all of the different files it accepts, including FDS or Famicom Disk System, but it does not say that you need any BIOS for that whatsoever. Now if you do not put a BIOS onto your Steam Deck and you try to play a Famicom Disk System game, it is going to just fail to load the content and boot right back to the library. You do need a Famicom Disk System BIOS, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But you'll see here unzipped are all those FDS folders or Famicom Disk System, and then we have zips for the standard cartridge games. You can leave them zipped. I just always unzip them. It's a personal preference. Whatever you choose to do is totally fine with me. But go ahead and get all the games you want to put on the Steam Deck, the games that you legally own cartridges or discs for, and we'll go ahead and copy those over to whatever removable USB device you want. For ease of use, just to make sure everything's organized, I create folders on the root of that micro SD card that I use with the USB adapter so I know what I am copying over. And like I said, the GitHub documentation doesn't tell you, but you're going to need disksys.rom as well or else it's just not going to load those games. And like all of my tutorials, it is based on using a dock, something that pretty much everyone's going to want anyway, and having some sort of USB mass storage device. That could be a thumb drive, that could be a micro USD card with an adapter, it could be an actual hard drive. If you want to see an FTV video, leave me a comment below and maybe I'll make that in the future. But over on the Steam Deck operating system, the desktop mode, we're going to go ahead and mount and open that storage that we have right here, and we're going to go to the NES folder. You will know that we have both NES games and Famicom Disk System games, and there are going to be folders for each individual type of game. Now, I personally put everything in the NES folder because I really don't feel like breaking it down into two headings on my library. You can totally do the opposite, but this is what I recommend. Go to wherever you installed EmuDeck, the root of the directory, and we'll go into emulation. We'll get to that BIOS for the Famicom Disk System in a second. Now if you head over to ROMs, it's alphabetical, they were nice to do that for us, Steam of course. And if we go down, we're going to see a folder for FDS. If you want to isolate Famicom Disk System games away from NES cartridges, you can put your FDS files here. Now I personally just like leaving everything in one folder, just so when I'm navigating around I have all my options here, and apparently I had an issue with knowing what letters come next today because I was scrolling and trying to find the NES folder, then I realized it was lower down, must have been tired. But pop everything you want in the NES folder, and it's as simple as that, and because the files are so tiny it takes no time. Now this disksys.rom that GitHub says you do not need, you're going to go over to the directory that you installed EmuDeck and you're going to go to the BIOS folder. It is not nested in a folder from there, just go ahead and paste over disksys.rom into the BIOS folder and that is all you need to do to make sure the Famicom Disk System will work. From here we're just going to go back into EmuDeck and we're going to go down to the bottom right hand corner and use tools and stuff. Just be aware, this BIOS checker has nothing to do with the Famicom Disk System. It is not in there, so you can't check. We're just going to go right over to Steam ROM Manager, read the warning about the control change, hit yes, and now we can start ingesting our games. And don't skip too far ahead even if you know this part, because we're going to be talking about some of that Famicom Disk System stuff as well. But as normal, by default, all the parsers are going to be turned on, so go ahead and go up to Preview, click that, and then you're going to hit Generate App List. This is going to take a look into every single folder, 
under ROMs and it's going to pull down anything that exists there including all of the games we just put on for the NES and for the Famicom disk system and if you have a lot of stuff like I do just filter by category and come down to NES. There's not a heading for every single system. And that's another reason why I like leaving everything in NES. And I will say today the ROM manager just pulled some straight garbage for some of the games that I was including on the system. I do not know why it's seeing two copies of this ROM. It's the A and B side of the disc more likely than others. But you will see that some things just came down as Towerfall Ascension. That is not right whatsoever. You can change these. I've showed it in a previous video. But for the time being, if you're happy with the art you have with all of your game headings, everything is appearing as normal, we can just go ahead and click Save App List. But really, Towerfall Ascension, the file has absolutely nothing to do with that. And I have noticed that ROM Manager does every once in a while just pick the most random things. But for the ease of the video, we'll hit Save App List. And once we have that done, we can go ahead and close the ROM Manager, close MUDEX menu, and return to gaming mode. And here you'll see we now have a folder with NES, some garbage headings completely, but all of the games including the Famicom Disk System games are going to be right here for us to play. But just because they're running doesn't mean there's not a lot of different settings we can articulate. So as the part two of the video, we're going to go over what Messen allows for setting articulation of what I think you guys should be doing. Because there's a lot of visual options, but honestly for running the emulator, there's not a ton of concrete options that you need to play around with, but we will go over the important ones. Go ahead and go to the Retro Arch main menu and you will see here that we're using Messen. There are two other cores available and for some reason the GitHub says it's Nestopia, but Messen is going to be the default and it is what I recommend. And you'll see here the first fun thing we can play around with is the NTSC filter. Because some of these games on NES are just too sharp running it at the core native settings. Sometimes you can want to put on a composite filter, sometimes you want to go to RGB. This doesn't change the gameplay whatsoever, but it gives you different visual options. I know a lot of people like playing around with those. Another important thing is the NES color palette because it is pretty much non-consistent across anything that you've ever played. What I think NES color should be might be completely different than what you think NES color should be. So there's a bunch of different color palettes you can select when you're playing around with this core. And I recommend playing with them to see what looks good to you because different hardware, different iterations, different colors completely. Now going over to the rest of the settings, we have overclock settings. By default it's set to none, you can go low, medium, high, or very high. This will eliminate some of the slowdown in some games, but sometimes it does cause other issues. As far as the region is concerned, just leave it on auto, it works 100% of the time, all the time. And sometimes you will see that there is some garbage to the left, right, top, or bottom that overscan. You can set it if you want because you can see some dots to the right hand side of the screen through that menu, but I leave it, I just like the dots. And as far as aspect ratio is concerned, I just leave it on auto. You have options for your controller turbo speed and a couple other small things like that. But honestly, if the game's running, you're basically just playing around with some visual settings at this point in time. And you will see that we have automatic insert disk and fast forward when loading for the Famicom disk system. I will get to those in a few moments when I get over to FDS games. But honestly, when Messen is running NES games, everything works exactly as should be expected. And I will say the core has awesome audio as well. So listen for like 30 seconds and I'll come back and start talking about Famicom Disk System. But enjoy! Sounds exactly like an NES should, you're either going to love it or hate it. But let's talk about Famicom Disk System games, because on boot you're going to see that it'll auto-set the disk for you, but you're going to end up in a situation a lot of times where it's going to say that you need to change the side of the disk. Doki Doki Panic here, you're going to set side A for the intro, and then all of a sudden the screen is going to say, set side B. L1 and R1 are going to be swapping sides and setting sides, so keep that in mind if you need to change the ordering of the disc, you'll just go ahead and use those buttons. Because if you've never seen a Famicom Disk System game before, there are two sides to the disc. Now not every single game uses both sides, but some do, and you see there's an A and a B side. When Messen asks you to do this, L1 and R1 are going to do it for you, they're going to change the side of the disc virtually. It does take a little bit of loading, but if you do everything correctly, everything on the Famicom Disk System side is going to work. 
but I wanted to mention that because I know it's going to trip some people up if they've never owned an original Famicom disc system before. I've got one under my desk as I talk right now, but I know I am the odd man out. But there is a ton of fun to be had on the Famicom disc system side, and I highly recommend you check some games out. I'm assuming most people knew that Super Mario Bros. 2 started as Doki Doki Panic, but if you didn't, leave me a comment down below because I would be curious. But again, this is just working exactly as it should, and that is the great part about MU Deck, Messin, and RetroArch. This is all of the Nintendo Entertainment System library, and all of the Famicom Disk System library under one emulator, and what it is doing is great. Moving over to Mega Man here, it looks good, everything is functioning as I would expect, there is no real lag in the controls whatsoever. This is like owning a Nintendo Entertainment System except better, because you're getting a much better screen image than you can out of a stock NES. You can do a lot better on the NES, but it requires a lot of modding that I know probably 99 out of 100 people that watch this video are going to have no interest in doing, and that is the incredible part. But don't forget, there is also a lot of fun to be had on the fan side of things, something like the original Mother that we really didn't get in North America, we just got Earthbound, do have fan translations available, and this is an incredible game that kicks off the entire Mother and Earthbound franchise, and you can play it on your Steam Deck, and this is the type of game I think works so well as an on-the-go experience. Play for like 45 minutes on your commute, get to work, put it away, play some on your way back home, and if you want to keep going through your Steam Deck in a dock and go from there. It just works, it's just incredible, and I absolutely love what it's doing. And if you follow this guide, it's going to work for you too. Just remember that there are some strangeness involved in the core. Things like it saying that you don't need the Famicom Disk System wrong, completely incorrect. You do need that. And even the GitHub says it's going to be using an emulator that it doesn't default to when you install EmuDeck. So just keep those things in mind. I knew NES would seem easy, but I knew if I didn't talk about the Famicom Disk System, some people would get 100% tripped up in there. But if you follow all the directions in this tutorial, you'll have NES and Famicom Disk System on your Steam Deck ready to play. But if you do run into any problems or if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And I also have a Discord where I do help people out with this. And some other members of my Discord are happy to help as well. And that link's at the bottom of the description. But if you follow along with this guide, you'll be playing NES and FDS on your Steam Deck. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.